Hello, I'm Stephen Edholm here at the Turkey Song Experimental Homestead and today I'm starting a project to make hide glue um, out of a bull skin. So yeah, I have an entire bull hide and uh, I don't really feel up to making this video today. I just took this allergy shot and it kind of kicked my ass. <clears throat> I feel pretty rough, but um, you know, this hide's fresh. I don't have a place to refrigerate or to freeze it, uh, and it's not going to get any more pleasant if I don't deal with it today. So I'm going to get started today and um, allow you to follow me through the, uh, the entire process um, over the next couple of weeks or so, and it should be cool. If you don't know a lot about high glue already, you're going to know a lot by the end of this video series. And uh, <clears throat> sorry if I'm not very coherent, but stuff's got to be done when it's got to be done. So first off, I'm going to sharpen up this tool here. This is a traditional flushing knife, a tanning knife. And um, I just started experimenting on the last bull hide that I tanned um, with oak bark. Uh, I started experimenting with sharpening this um, <clears throat> convex side of the blade very sharp. Uh, you can't really do that with thin skins because if you gouge in at all, you're just going to cut through the skin. But, you know, bull hide is so thick that it, it worked tolerably well. I think I need a lot of practice and I'd sure like to watch, you know, someone really experienced like an old school pro um, working with one of these when it's really sharp. But overall, it's uh, way, way less work than using a dull blade. And then next we're going to go cut some limbs to put down under the beam. Uh, some fur boughs, just, uh, you know, fresh green ones to keep the skin clean. Uh, instead of putting down a tarp, I like to use just, I'll just cut down a small fir tree that I'm going to cut down anyway and make a nice bed around the tanning beam of those. So let's get going. On this side, I, I sharpened the entire tool so that I can just lay the stone across both edges and it's, it simultaneously sharpens both of these flat faces on the bottom of the tool. And it's quite sharp. Yeah, it shaves with uh, with resistance, but that's that's good enough for now. This area is going to get cleared. A lot of the trees are dying from disease, and this particular tree I just don't want there. And um, it's not really good for building, so it's going to be you know charcoal and firewood. So I'm just going to drop it right now so I can get the green limbs off of it. All right, that looks pretty good. I got a nice blanket of fir boughs here that's going to keep this hide clean because it, it, it's going to be, it's a huge hide. It's going to fall on the ground all the time. And yeah, definitely need something. I want to keep this clean. I'm going for a really high grade of high glue, uh, very clean, very strong. 
and I don't want a bunch of dirt in there. So let's see what we got. Well, we got rocks. That's not good. It's gonna dull up my knife. This thing probably weighs 80 to 100 pounds of very awkward dead weight. All right, so now I have the neck at the top. There literally are rocks on this skin. Lots of dirt, lots of twigs, leaves. So about the, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do with this skin is what's called rounding, which means just cutting off a lot of this kind of tag ends and stuff that I don't wanna deal with. It's gonna make the hide lighter. If I was a professional glue maker, old school style, there's no way I would cut this stuff off. This is money. And uh, this is often done before tanning skins into leather, too. <clears throat> and um, actually, all of these parts that I'm cutting off, I mean, they didn't cut off as much as I'm cutting off, but they were sold to uh, glue makers because that's uh, that was a valuable resource back then. Yeah, the glue makers would actually buy this stuff and then uh, process it in large batches. Because there weren't that many other glues. Skin glue was kind of the most common glue for a long time. tool is so sharp that it's capable of slicing the skin like underneath this fleshy material. <clears throat> the stuff I'm fleshing off isn't really meat. It's a uh, it's like connective tissue. It tends to be have a lot of fat in it which we don't want in the glue. Um, otherwise it actually contains some of the stuff that makes glue but I really want to get rid of all of that like I said, I'm going for a really high grade glue here, so I want this skin squeaky clean. There's definitely some flesh and fat on the skin. And you can see this is all meat. There's some meat here, a bunch of fat there. But that stuff comes off pretty easy. It's really the layer underneath that. This um, layer that kind of connects uh, the skin to, the, to these sheets of muscle, I think. And it's just always tough to get off. I mean, on almost any animal, it's difficult to get off. But on cattle, um, you know, in my somewhat limited experience, it's always really hard to get off. Also though, there seems to be almost a universal tendency for it to come off easier once the skin is dried once um, and sometimes liming will help too. Um, the next step is I'm going to soak this in lime solution and that's going to loosen the hair and do a bunch of other stuff that I'll talk about later. But um, 
the skin will swell up and get kind of hard and rubbery and, and this stuff may come off a little easier. So really for now, um, especially considering that I don't have a lot of energy right now, I'm just going to try to get off this big gunky stuff for the most part. I'm not being very careful. I don't know if you can see, but there's cut marks all over the skin. Yeah, um, they knew I was going to make glue out of it, so it wasn't skinned very well in the first place. This sharp blade really helps. I'm not quite sure what I think about it for, say, you know, if I was actually going to tan this skin. Um, I'd be a lot more careful. I'm taking off, like, chunks of skin. I've cut off a few big holes. Like, these are actually shavings of skin, so I'm kind of going underneath a little bit. Again, okay for this project, and I at this point I just really want to get this thing done. Oh yeah, and also, this has been sitting out for a few hours, and kind of a glaze has developed over some of it, and that's actually flushing easier also because of that. So the skin is all fleshed out. Yay! I'm just trying to rinse out some of the major dirt and blood out of the hair side so that it doesn't um, stain the, the skin as much. A few lessons learned here. The uh, concave, very sharp side of this blade is extremely aggressive. I actually did a skin um, last year a bull hide also that I tanned in oak bark using this to flesh and I was much much more careful even so I made quite a few gouges this time I made tons of gouges even some very large holes um, again that doesn't matter and uh, I got still got some exper more experience with this tool and <clears throat> trying to figure out what it's all about and uh, again I didn't get everything off this is a first pass, and I'll be going over this side repeatedly, many times through this process. Um, after the hide's soaked in lime and dehaired, I have to get the lime back out of the skin, which involves rinsing it and going over this side over and over again. And each time I do that, I'll get a little bit more of this crap off and uh, get it super clean. So next, it's gonna go into a rinse barrel of just plain water. I'll do that a number of times and uh, maybe whenever the water is running relatively clear, I'll put it into a batch of lime water, but we'll talk about that later on.